Hello artists, today we are going to be making Frankenstein art projects inspired by the famous artist Pablo Picasso. What you'll need for your project is a piece, two pieces of green paper. One needs to be light green and one needs to be dark green. So two different shades of green. And then scrap pieces of white and black paper. They don't need to be whole pieces, just scrap pieces. And then you'll need a piece for a background. I am choosing purple for my background because I like how it contrasts with the green. You will also need a scissors, a pencil, and optional, you could have Sharpies. I have black and silver. Your last thing you need is some glue. I have some glue that I poured into a cup with a paintbrush. A glue stick or a glue bottle would work for this as well. To get started, I'm going to use my two pieces of green paper and my pencil. What I am going to do is I'm going to take my two pieces of green paper and put them on top of each other and make sure that they're even. I'm going to use these pieces of paper to make the face of my Frankenstein. To make my Frankenstein's face, the top of his head is going to be flat. We'll put hair on top, so it's going to be flat. So I'm going to draw his head starting at the top of my paper. I'm going to make an upside down rainbow. So something that could be easy for you or easier for you Flip your page upside down and draw a really tall rainbow. It does not have to be perfect. So there is my tall rainbow. And what I'm going to do next is I am going to draw a line, a wiggly line, and that's going to show two halves of my Frankenstein face. You don't want to draw a straight line for this. You want to draw a wavy line. And you don't want the waves to be too tiny because you have to cut these out and you don't want to cut out the tiniest little waves. So just do a couple big waves across your paper. Next, making sure that my two pages stay together I'm grabbing them with both hands, pinching them with my finger or my thumb and my fingers, holding them tight. And then I'm going to start to cut. If you need help with this step because it's hard for you to hold both of the pieces of paper together, please let me know and I have some ways that I can help you out. We could tape the paper together or I could hold it tight while you cut. You could also ask a table partner to help you if you need some extra help. So now I've cut out that rainbow shape. My next step is to keep my pages together just like I did before. Now I'm going to cut the half on my wavy line. So this part I'm being really, really careful Cutting that wavy line. Notice how I move the paper with my hand. I turn it to help guide my scissors on that line. I'm making sure I'm holding onto the papers so that I'm keeping my two greens, my light green and my dark green pages together. I'm almost to the bottom and Perfect. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to separate them. And now I need to put my Frankenstein together like a puzzle. So if I have these two pieces, do those fit together? No. So let's find out what does. Do these fit together? Well, they do, but we want to have two shades of green. So I need to swap this piece out for my dark green piece. There we go. Perfect. So 
So now I'm going to take my purple piece of paper and I'm going to create, glue it down to create the background. Now, before I glue these down, I have one more thing that I want to do. So that my head's just not floating on my background, I'm going to create a neck. To create my neck, I'm going to take a scrap of my green paper from before and I'm going to use my pencil and just kind of mark how long I would need that neck to be. So figuring this out, you don't want to have your neck too long because that would look kind of silly. So I think if I cut, that would be good. Okay, so I marked how thick I want the neck to be and I'm just gonna give this a quick chop. And then I'm going to cut this curvy part out. Perfect. Okay, so now, first, before you glue your face down, you're going to glue down the neck. Your neck can be just a green square or a green rectangle. I have lined it up with the bottom of my paper, putting glue on the back. Don't do too much glue because you don't want to have a sticky, icky, ooey, ooey mess, but you want to have enough glue to make sure that it does stay down. So a thin layer of glue should be enough. Using my fingers and pressing on all the sides, all the corners. Okay, now that that's glued down, now I can put on my Frankenstein face. So. I'm gonna start with gluing down the dark green piece. I need to flip it over and add my glue. Now I know the flat side goes on top because that's where his hair will be. And I'm just overlapping on the neck a little bit. Overlapping will make it look a little bit more believable, a little bit more realistic. Next, I'll do the same thing with my light green side. Next, I have to add eyes, mouth, teeth, eyebrows, hair, and some bolts for Frankenstein's neck. So I'm gonna teach you a trick that I do to make some eyes. If I want to make two circled eyes, what I'm going to do is take a small white piece of paper and fold it in half. And then I'm going to draw a half circle or a rainbow line. So I did two because I want two eyes. Then I'm going to cut that half circle out. If it's not on the line perfectly, that's okay. So I have two circle eyes. Maybe you wanna have one circle eye and one eye that's a different shape. That's a choice that you get to make with your art. And then to make his pupils, you would do the same thing with black. Next, I'm gonna make some eyebrows and I'm gonna use the same piece of folded paper that I used when I made um, the pupils. So this time my eyebrows are going to be a zigzag shape. So flat on the bottom, zigzag on top. So with my folded paper, I'm gonna start from the bottom and I'm gonna cut out a rectangle. Then I guess it's up to you. You could have zigzag eyebrows or just flat eyebrows. Um, cutting a zigzag would be pretty hard and I know I'm gonna do a zigzag for his hair so for now, my Frankenstein is just gonna have two flat 
eyebrows. Next, we'll be doing our Frankenstein mouths. So take another piece of scrap paper and then make a mouth shape. The mouth shape will be your choice. Remember to do a mouth shape and then add some teeth. My next step is to create two bolts in Frankenstein's neck. The bolts are a T shape, a capital T shape. So what I'm going to do again is take my black piece of paper and fold it in half. Since I know I need two, this is my shortcut. I only have to cut once, but it will make two if I fold it in half. So my T shape, I'll do this for you in silver Sharpie so you can see. I'm going to do a rectangle like that and then a rectangle on top to create a bubble letter capital T. Now when I cut that out I'm making sure that I hold the piece of paper together. If you drop it just line it back up and I'm just cutting around that T shape. Remember, if it's not perfect, it's okay. You're making a Frankenstein. Frankenstein was definitely not a perfect guy. He was a monster. So I have my two bolts. I see that this one has pencil on it, so I'm just going to erase it. A simple fix. So I'll glue those bolts on. Next, the last step with cutting is I need to make Frankenstein some hair. So I'm gonna line up my paper with the top of his head. I'm laying it corner to corner on the flat side of my paper so that I can measure how big Frankenstein's head is and I make a mark. I'm gonna mark how tall I want his hair to be too. I'm thinking that tall. So I'm gonna cut that out. Maybe a little taller. So I'm gonna make I'm gonna cut some zigzags in his hair. So that means I'll be cutting it a little shorter with the zigzags. Okay. Lining it up looks good, but before I glue it on, I'm gonna cut some zigzags. So basically just straight line down, straight line up, straight line down, straight line up. And I'm gonna do that until I get to the very end. Okay, so now it's time for our final details. For my Frankenstein, I'm going to give him some scars. To give him a scar, I'm gonna do a straight vertical line that goes up and down, and then some horizontal lines that go through it. You could also do a horizontal line with vertical lines going through it. You can give them a couple, but don't go overboard. You don't want to do too many. I think that's probably enough for me. Making sure our names are on it. And then the last detail, if you want to try this, maybe in the background, you want to add some spooky Halloween details. My idea for that is you could try a spider web. To draw a spider web in the corner, you would draw a curved line across the corner and then three lines coming out of the corner at a diagonal. And then you're adding another curvy line that lines up with your other curvy lines going all the way into that corner. So that creates a spider web. You could even draw a spider hanging from that web if you wanted to.